Hey guys, it's Janice. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with GoodNotes 6 on the iPad. You'll learn how to navigate the app, use its note-taking tools, and by the end, you should have a pretty good understanding of how the app works. You can use the timestamps to quickly jump to specific sections if needed. When you first open the app, you'll be prompted to create a GoodNotes account. You can use your Apple ID, Google, or Microsoft account. This is the account you'll log into to sync your subscription across multiple devices. For instance, if you want to download GoodNotes on your phone, you'll have to log into the same GoodNotes account to view your notes. I also recommend turning on iCloud so all your notes get synced across your devices whenever you make changes. Once you've logged in, you'll be brought to the homepage of GoodNotes. This is where you'll see all your notebooks and documents as well as all the folders you'll create to organize them. On the left side, you will see a few tabs. Documents, which is the tab you want to be on for all your files. Favorites, if you've bookmarked anything in your notes, which I will show you how to do later. Search, if you'd like to search your handwritten notes, typed documents, and PDFs. Shared documents, which I will show you how to do later as well. And GoodNotes Marketplace, which offers a selection of planner and notebook templates from various creators. You can hide this tab by tapping on this icon. On the right side, you have the bell for any notifications from the GoodNotes team themselves and settings, which I will go through as well in just a bit. You can organize your documents by date, name, and type. And you can also change the document view from icons to list and vice versa. So first, let's go through the most basic task, which is how to create a notebook. When you tap this box with a plus inside it, you'll have several options to choose from. You can create a notebook, a study set, which is basically flashcards, a folder, you can import an image, scan a document, take a photo, import your own PDF, or create a quick note. Lots of options, and I figured because it's important, I'll first show you how to create a folder to organize your notes. Just tap on folder and you'll have the option to name your folder, change the color, and also add an icon on it if you'd like. Now, if you're wondering how I'm writing on the iPad and having it converted to text, I'm actually using a native iPad feature called Scribble. Just head to your Apple Pencil settings to turn this feature on. You can create as many folders as you'd like, and you can also put folders within folders to further organize your notes. So with that out of the way, let's start with the basics of creating your own notebook. Now on the screen, you'll be able to customize various parts of your notebook. You can choose from a selection of templates that already comes with GoodNotes 6. If you scroll all the way to the right, you will see that you can also import your own paper templates. By default, the template is their GoodNotes standard size, but you can change it to other sizes such as A4, A5, A6, and you can set your own custom paper size as well. You can also switch between portrait and landscape templates. Now, if you're wondering why the paper is a cream color, don't be frightened you can actually change it to white and dark paper as well. In GoodNotes 6, you can also customize the template colors yourself. So if you wanted a white paper with a bright blue or orange grid, you can do that by tapping on Customize Colors here. There are also several notebook cover options which you can customize the colors of as well. You can take your time to explore these. I'm gonna go ahead and create the notebook. You can give it a name and also choose the language. So go ahead and tap on Create and your notebook is ready to use. Upon swiping, you'll notice that you only have the cover and one notebook page. If you want to add another page, you simply just swipe and you'll see this icon that says release to add new page. And that's how you can add new pages as you go. There are a couple other ways to add new pages, which I will show you in a bit. You can double tap with your finger so that your document fills the screen. If you've created your notebook and you've changed your mind about the template, you can tap the three dots up here and tap on change template. This will bring you back to the template selection screen where you can change both the cover and paper template, which in this case, I'll change my notebook to landscape mode. Do note that this only changes the template for the page you're currently on, so you'll have to repeat the step for each page in the notebook. Alternatively, you can tap on the thumbnail view icon here to quickly delete some notebook pages, then you can pull to add new pages. By default, GoodNotes uses horizontal scrolling. If you prefer vertical scrolling, you just have to tap on the three dots on the top right here. Then at the bottom, you'll see scrolling direction, and you can change that to vertical scrolling if you'd like. 
Before you start writing, you might also find the stylus and palm rejection setting under the same three dots helpful. You can set your writing posture. This is especially useful if you're left-handed and you don't want your palm interfering with the writing experience. You can also change the palm rejection sensitivity, but for me, I've kept everything to its default settings and I've had no issues, but you can play around with these to find what works best for you. Let's go over what's in the toolbar for you to use. There are three icons at the top here, read only mode, full page keyboard, and audio recording. When you're in editing mode, you will always have this blue toolbar that shows a bunch of other tools like the pen, eraser, etc. underneath. This icon is what toggles between editing mode and read only mode. If you tap on this icon, you'll notice the blue toolbar and your writing tools all disappear. Tap on the screen again in this mode and you will completely hide the toolbar at the top. So if you're using a digital planner or a notebook with hyperlinks built in, you will need to have read only mode turned on to jump through the links. To get back into editing mode, just tap on the pen icon again and you'll have access to your writing tools again. The next icon over is the full page keyboard. This is a relatively new feature that is still being worked on. It's basically for full page typing and works best if you have a keyboard to connect to your iPad. There are some style and formatting options like for headers and paragraphs, but it's still quite limited. You can't change the font on what you type. They did integrate some AI features. So if you type something, you can highlight it, tap on the sparkles icon, and it will give you some suggestions, which is pretty cool. The icon on the right is for audio recording, so if you're in a meeting or a lecture, you can record audio as you write your notes. You can access your recordings by tapping on this icon on the left and playback all the recordings. You can change the playback speed and also turn on noise reduction. You can actually play your recording along with your notes and your notes will appear at the time they were written. As far as I'm aware, there is not any option yet to rename your audio, so hopefully that is a feature the team will add in soon. Now we're gonna move on to the most exciting part, which is the writing tools. In order here, we have the pen tool, eraser, highlighter, shapes tool, the lasso tool, elements, photos, text box, zoom window, ruler, and laser. The first tool here is the pen tool. You will see three pen options to choose from, fountain pen, ball pen, and brush pen. The first one is the fountain pen, which is pressure sensitive, and you can change the tip sharpness and pressure sensitivity to your liking. To undo an action, the undo icon is on the top left here. Next is the ball pen, which is non-pressure sensitive and is my personal favorite pen option to use. And last but not least is the brush pen, which gives you even more variation in width depending on the pressure you use to write. You can change the pen width on the right here. It goes from 0.1 millimeters to two millimeters and you can set three width presets on the toolbar. You can also change the lines to dashed and dotted. Of course, the good thing with digital notes that I always rave about is the endless pen colors you can have. You can choose your pen color by tapping on the swatch here. You can set custom pen colors using the grid, the wheel, your own hex codes, and you can add an endless number of custom color presets to your pen. And one of my favorite parts is organizing the colors, which you can do so just by dragging them around. You can also use the new eyedropper tool to select a color off the screen. So if I wanted the blue color on this toolbar here, I just have to drag the eyedropper there. You can keep adding custom colors to your palette, and you can also have as many colors as you'd like on the preset toolbar. A neat trick is that if you draw and hold a line, it will convert it into a straight line for you. This also applies to shapes like circles, squares, triangles, etc., where it will perfect the shape for you if you just hold after drawing. There are some extra pen settings back in the pen tool, which are new with GoodNotes 6, such as scribble to erase, so when you scribble over a word, it'll act as an eraser. There is also circle to lasso, which is a little bit wonky in my experience. I wasn't able to demonstrate it in this video since it never seems to work properly for me, and I prefer using the lasso tool anyway. There are also writing aids such as spell check. If you've spelt a word wrong, GoodNotes can correct it for you in your own handwriting, or at least something that looks close to it. There is also word complete, which is still an experimental feature. It suggests words as you're writing and will complete the word in your own handwriting if you use the suggestion. Next up, we have the eraser tool. There are three options for the eraser, the precision eraser, which erases things bit by bit, 
the standard eraser, which is a less precise version of the precision eraser, and the stroke eraser, which erases pen strokes. The eraser tool only comes in three sizes. You can toggle on erase highlighter only if you want to keep your writing, but you want to get rid of the highlighter. To automatically switch back from the eraser to the last tool you were using, you can turn on auto deselect. Next is the highlighter. There is only one option and by default it writes in a straight line. And just like the pen tool, you can change the size and color and set a few presets. The shapes tool basically evens out your shapes for you as I've shown with the pen tool, but this one is handy if you want to just be able to get those shapes without having to draw and hold. I usually just stick to the pen tool anyway since it does the same thing. With this tool, you can also choose whether or not you want your shapes to be filled with color once drawn. Next is the lasso tool, which is used to select things on the page to either move them or do further actions. If you circle something, you can move it around the page, and if you tap on it again, you have a few options to choose from. Aside from the self-explanatory ones, you have a range, which is used to layer text and images, so you can either send that selection to the back or bring it to the front. You can tap on resize to manipulate the size of your selection and rotate it. You can change the color of your selection from your presets. You can take a screenshot, which you can then share as an image. You can add it to your GoodNotes elements as a sticker, and you can also convert it to text or math syntax. When you convert it to text, you can either copy it and paste it somewhere else, or you can fully convert it to a text box. When you convert it to math, any numbers, symbols, and equations will be converted to their math syntax equivalent. And with the lasso tool, if you only want to select certain things, you can tap on the lasso icon again and turn off whatever you don't want it to pick up. Next is the elements tool. This feature is for adding, storing, and managing stickers in GoodNotes, and it's great if you love to plan or journal. You can add your own scribbles to elements, and you can also import your own photos. I use these only for stickers that I've created. If you're buying stickers from a shop, they usually come in dot collection files that are imported through here. I do have a video on downloading and importing digital planners and stickers if you want to learn more about this feature. Next is the Photos tool, which will allow you to import images from your iPad's photo album onto the document. Once your photo is on the screen, you can resize it, expand it, and rotate it. If you tap on the photo again, you can crop it using two options. One, a standard rectangular crop, and two, a freehand crop which will allow you to doodle and extract a random shape from the image. Next is the text box. This one has a lot more freedom compared to the full page keyboard mode in that you can choose your own font and customize the text box. If you want to install your own custom fonts, you will need to have a third-party font installation app. In this case, I always recommend using iFont, which is free from the App Store. Simply send your font file to this app, tap on install, and follow the instructions in the app. You'll have a configuration profile downloaded, which you will then install by going into your iPad settings. Please make sure you only download fonts from sources you trust. You can change the font size, play with the text alignment, and also adjust the line spacing if you have your own custom templates. And of course, you can set the color for your text. You can save a default text box style by tapping on the text box tool again and tapping save as default. This will set everything you've chosen in the toolbar as the default style, so anytime you start a new text box, it'll use the same font, size, color, spacing, etc. You can also spice up your text box by tapping on this icon. You can add a background, a border, a shadow, adjust the padding, etc. And this is actually a really nice feature if you wanted to make your own label stickers. Next is the zoom window. This is a handy tool that zooms into the page for you and you'll be presented with a little window where you can write. You can change the zoom and size of this window just by dragging this little corner here. As you write in this window, you'll notice a blue box appear. This is the auto advance feature where if you continue your writing in this box, the zoom window will actually move with you as you write along the page so you don't have to swipe back and forth when you start new lines and such. You'll notice that the zoom window starts new lines for you when you reach the end of the page, so you can keep on writing without ever having to pan the screen. You can also manually move the zoom window along by using your fingers or by tapping the arrow icons here. You can manually set a return height if you want the zoom window to jump further down when starting new lines. 
You can use your pen, highlighter, and eraser in the zoom window. However, if you want to undo something, you'll have to use the regular undo icon on the screen. Next, we have the ruler, which you can manipulate with your fingers. If you tap on it again, you can set the angle and position and also change it from inches to centimeters. It scales with the page as you zoom in and out, and you can also draw on it to create a straight line. Finally, we have the laser pointer. If you're a teacher or if you're presenting something on your document, you can use this laser pointer as a helpful visual aid. There are two styles, one that is just a red dot and the other one which you can scribble with but it disappears shortly. Now you have a basic knowledge of the tools to start writing and taking notes in GoodNotes. Now let's quickly cover some of the other icons on the toolbar. We've already seen some of them on the left here. These four squares here will bring up a thumbnail view so you can see all your pages in the document at once. You can move pages around here just by dragging and dropping. You can add new pages in this window by tapping the big empty box or by tapping on the arrow underneath the page. You can also duplicate pages delete them, move them to a different notebook, or export them from this window. Using the tabs at the top, you can also view pages that you've bookmarked and outlines which basically just organize your document. Some PDFs, such as textbooks, already have outlines in them for each chapter and section, so you can quickly skip to those pages by going through the outlines window here. Next is the search icon. You can use this to search your handwritten notes and also typed documents, and it will populate with the search results here, which will bring you to the page where that word or phrase is found. Now on the other side, you have a few icons as well. The first one is simply an add page icon, which you can add a new page using the same template or from different sources. Next is the flag, which you would tap on to bookmark the page that you're currently on, and this page would show up under the Favorites tab in the thumbnail view, as well as under the Favorites tab on the main GoodNotes library page. And while we're here, the search function from the main GoodNotes page will search through your entire library for the specified word or phrase, not just one document. Next is the Share Export icon. You can choose to export only a certain page or the entire document. You also have several file options for export. You can share it as a flattened or editable PDF, as an image, which you can choose to compress into a zip file, or as a GoodNotes file. A newer option is to share the document for collaboration within GoodNotes. So you can send the generated link to someone else who has GoodNotes and they can write in the same document as you. Any documents that you've shared will appear under the Shared tab on the GoodNotes main page. Next are the three dots which we've already gone into for a few things. In this menu, you can copy the page you're on, then head to Thumbnail View and paste the page in your desired location within the document. You can rotate your pages in this menu, add it to the outline, which you can then find it under the Outlines tab in Thumbnail View. You can change the paper template, which we've already done, and there are a few other options, such as jumping to a certain page number, clearing the page, and deleting the page. At the bottom here is document editing. Several other settings within here, you can toggle automatic screen lock, so if you don't want your iPad screen to turn off while you're working on something, then make sure this is off. You can also toggle the status bar on and off so it will hide the date and time. I like to keep this off as it actually gives you a bit more screen space. You can choose to disable pull to add page and whether or not you want page numbers to show. A new feature is that you can customize your toolbar. So if you don't find yourself using certain tools, you can remove them from the main toolbar. You can also rearrange the order of your tools. Any tools that you've removed can be stored under this overflow menu so you can still access them when you need them. You can change your tool position to the top or bottom, and you can also change the position of the undo and redo buttons, which can be quite handy based on if you're left-handed or right-handed. Some other settings include turning off the auto advance feature in the zoom window, toggling object selection without switching tools, and setting preferences for how the app behaves when opening documents and new imports. If you want to pull up the same document in split screen or another document in split screen, you can actually pull up GoodNotes again and drag it to the side to activate split screen mode. Now you might be wondering, how do I back up my files just in case something happens? If you head back to the main page and tap on the settings on the top right, 
you'll see a cloud and backup option. I do recommend keeping iCloud on, not just to sync your documents between your devices, but to keep a copy of your documents on the cloud. To make sure that your iCloud is actually doing its job, you can go to your iPad settings, tap on your Apple ID account, tap on iCloud, manage storage, and underneath, you should be able to see GoodNotes and an approximate size of the documents, which would tell you that they're being stored on iCloud. You can also do a manual backup of your documents, so GoodNotes will make a copy of your library in the form of a .goodnotes.zip file. You can save this file to a location of your choice, such as Google Drive or Dropbox, and to restore that backup, you simply just have to take that file and import it back into GoodNotes. You can also choose to turn on automatic backup to regularly keep your files backed up and protected. Under the same menu, you can also manage notebook templates without having to create a new notebook. The interface is exactly the same as what we went through earlier. We've already seen most of these settings during the walkthrough, but you might want to take note of the email to GoodNotes feature so you can actually email a PDF file directly to your own GoodNotes library. When you have this enabled, you'll be provided an email to forward your PDFs to. In terms of pricing, you can pay for GoodNotes 6 on a yearly basis, and it grants you access to the Apple, Microsoft, and Windows versions of GoodNotes. However, the AI features are limited to only the Apple version, and audio recording length is also unlimited only on the Apple version. If you're only using Apple anyway, you can opt for the one-time fee and that will give you access to the full premium version of GoodNotes without having to pay on a subscription basis. With that said, I hope this video was a good introduction to using GoodNotes, and I hope you now have a better understanding of the tools and how to get started with note-taking in it. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment, and I'll see you next time.